The use of mesh in hernia repair has been very controversial lately, especially in the United Kingdom, Europe and other places, and for good reason. It is important to assess the true place of hernia in this context from the perspective of a specialist surgeon with a strong research background to truly assess uh, the truth of the issues surrounding the use of mesh. So going forward, we know that there are a large number of meshes available. Um, and perhaps this is an area that ought to be regulated and, and, and better monitored from a research perspective before actually bringing meshes to the market. Each new generation of mesh is more expensive, uh, hence a higher profit margin. Uh, but in terms of what it offers, new or more uh, benefit to the patient is not always clear cut. Uh, but what is it that the meshes have brought that has changed the game? So a mesh is a way of hernia repair which is free of tension and it allows a framework uh, for scar tissue to form uh, which has reduced significantly the number of recurrences which were previously seen just with tissue repair. And that is a whole spectrum of uh, anatomical sites where mesh has been used. That said though, uh, over the last decade and perhaps longer, women in women where meshes were inserted for prolapse or for urinary incontinence have suffered hugely with unacceptable percentage of women with life-changing uh, symptoms as a result. They, were in chronic, they have been in chronic pain and the meshes have migrated and this was in a misuse of a mesh at the wrong place for the wrong indication and without enough evidence base. So what does that mean? That Does it mean that all meshes are bad and then we should stop using a mesh in any anatomical site or should we assess the evidence very carefully so that we don't throw away the baby with the, ba with the bath water and differentiate clearly what is anecdote and what is evidence. An anecdote is say with me telling you that my uncle had a repair with a mesh and he suffered horribly and the mesh was bad. This incidence doesn't tell me what type of mesh was used, what type of hernia it was, <coughs> what symptoms did my uncle get, how poorly did he get, how was that managed, how was it diagnosed and so on. And it cannot be standardized in any way whereas evidence is the scientific, scientific basis of assessing evidence in the best ways of randomized trial, where two groups of patients are treated exactly the same, except for one being treated with standard treatment and the other being treated with experimental treatment. And then the results are assessed at the end. So the, the topic here is mesh repair in groin surgery, because that is a good place to start where we actually have evidence and the meshes have been around for about 30 years. The meshes over here are implicated with two main issues. One is chronic pain and the other I'll talk about a bit later. Serious debilitating chronic pain associated with the use of the mesh. Now is it true or is there something else? So before we delve into it it's important to actually define what is chronic pain because the studies that actually talk about chronic pain do not use a uniform definition. So the accepted definition across the surgical community now is a patient having pain that interferes with their day-to-day -day living for longer than three months be classed as having chronic pain. If you use that definition quite strictly, you find that the huge numbers of patients in whom chronic pain has been thought to have occurred is actually not true because any operation causes pain and, and any operation can leave you with chronic pain. The groin hernia surgery is not unique in that. So going forward, is mesh actually at, implicated with research evidence as the cause of chronic pain? And there have been quite a few randomized trial comparing the use of mesh both in open surgery as well as laparoscopic surgery and comparing that with 
open techniques where tissue alone was used to repair the hernia. And guess what? There was no difference in the incidence of chronic pain when a trial methodology was applied scientifically and it was clear that the two groups did not differ in the incidence of chronic pain. Uh, and the use of mesh in laparoscopic keyhole surgery uh, is been now for well over two decades uh, and yet again it has a very good track rec record in terms of chronic pain. Okay, so if mesh is not implicated, what has research shown us in groin surgery? Who is more at risk? So here's a group, young age, female, severe pain before an operation and significant pain right after an, an operation, as well as those who've had a recurrent hernia repaired. As this group, unfortunately, who are at higher risk, research has proven, of getting uh, post-operative chronic pain. Okay, so if it isn't mesh then what are the factors that could help the patient specifically with regards to groin surgery but perhaps in other anatomic sites as well you need to be or the patients need to go to the right center with the right team and specifically the surgeon who actually has a, an interest and has experience in the repair of groin hernia using a mesh. And whilst performing the operation is careful in his dissection and identifying and preserving the cutaneous nerves, which sometimes but not always uh, may be one cause of chronic pain and not always, who limits tissue damage, controls bleeding and uses the mesh in a tension-free, safe way and who actually assesses his or her results and who then may be open to changing practice if they find that some things are not working that need correcting or new evidence comes about. It's that sort of a team and a surgeon that are likely to produce good long-term results uh, from which patients can derive a lot of satisfaction. Okay, so if that is a that has been accepted so our mesh is mesh not to blame at all well actually that is not true either meshes are associated with a number of complications they can be displaced when infected it is a nightmare and very difficult to remove meshes are associated with the currents albeit at a very small rate compared to other techniques but there are open open groin hernia repair operations that have low recurrence rate without the use of the mesh and of course they can form collections around them or the mesh can can turn itself into a little ball and doesn't actually do or doesn't actually perform the function for which it was designed. So yes, complications can occur with mesh but the incidence is quite low. So what is the other big um, concern with mesh and it is does it cause immune reaction? I mean does it generate a more generalized reaction within the body i.e. an antibody type reaction now I certainly have looked into this evidence very thoroughly and there are others who've researched looking into studies and well there is no evidence that the mesh material of the type that are being deployed has any evidence of causing a generalized immune reaction um, so I end this talk not as a proponent or, or as a big proponent of MESH but as a proponent of research and as a proponent of changing practice or when research and good evidence um, direct us to.